This is Arthur Ball, a man with an idea. An idea which culminated in the first congregational outing in Temple Beth Zion's history. And this is Art's modern farm in Clarence, where that idea became a reality. The first arrivals on that sunny day in June were the many committee people who worked long and hard to make the jamboree a success. Without their labors, no affair of this magnitude would have been possible. Collecting tickets was a breeze for the ticket committee, headed by Frank Miller. He's the man in the red shirt. With him is Jack Goldman, president of the Temple Men's Club for the 1955 season. Almost 1,000 tickets were sold by the hardworking members of the ticket committee. And in addition, 1,000 more persons purchased their tickets at the gate. Parking was no problem thanks to an ample parking lot and alert attendants like treasurer Sal Ballatin. The center of attraction for the younger set was Phyllis O'Mell, who did a tremendous job selling tickets for the pony rides. The price was well within the reach of even the smallest allowances. It seemed that there was always a short wait for the pony rides. And even baseball's future greats warmed up in this bullpen. Isn't that right, Red? Pony boy, pony boy, won't you be my pony boy? Don't say no, here we go, off across the plains. Marry me, carry me, right away with you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, oh, my pony boy. Be my pony boy, don't say no, here we go, off across the plains. Marry me, carry me, right away with you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, whoa, my pony boy. This is Arthur Ball's daughter, Tina, who was hostess to all the boys and girls during the afternoon. With her is Davy Crockett, the horseman of the hour. They're off and running.
Fresh Air Taxi Cab Company was on duty for most of the afternoon. And as the man says, you can't hardly get them no more. Seat six stands 36. The gentleman on the top of the truck is Harold Corrette. He and Lauren Racklin were responsible for the fine photography in this film. Thanks again, Harold. We hope that when these young ladies grow up, they'll run as fast to every sisterhood meeting as they do in this race. Paid attendance this afternoon, 59,642. Prizes were awarded to all of the winners in the games. To those who didn't win, better luck next time. It's mine, it's mine, I've got it, I've got it. Quick, throw it home. Ooh, my hand. One of the top attractions of the day was the personal appearance of Davy Crockett. And here he goes. Oops, there he went. The man on the horse with the orange shirt attempting to catch the pony is Uncle Harry Dozberg of the Royal Mounted, who is also chairman of our games committee. And like a true champion, Davy remounted his horse and rode away. Fought single-handed through the engine war. Till the Greeks was whipped and peace was in store. While he was handling this risky chore, made himself a legend forevermore. Davy, Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier.
Attention all hands. Who's the shamus and who's the schnook? Dick Levy or Dick Daniels of our sound department? A real live parade was staged for us by the Millgrove Volunteer Fire Department and their ladies auxiliary. no hands. Did we say fire department? Here's Dr. Max Schneider, right on the job. Three steers were barbecued and roasted for eight hours over beds of charcoal. Nate Gordon took charge of our food committee, as important an assignment as any group of fressers ever made. Even Dr. Goldberg approved. Remember how good that roast beef tasted? Let's go now. First come, first serve. This is all that's left of those beautiful steers, skin and bone. There's Nate Gordon, working as hard as ever to make the food arrangements of our picnic a big success. Mmm, mmm. There was even a short order department presided over by Arnold Fernandes and his committee. And they were busy. Obviously a pose picture. Ice cream always tastes better when it drips a little bit, doesn't it, honey? better than one. This is the delicate touch. The final event of the day was the milking contest, which had several interesting results. First of all, about 200 city slickers learned that milk doesn't come from the milkman. And also, 
They learned how several of Arthur Ball's contented cows became discontented. The winner is determined by weight on a laboratory scale, four pounds, 13 and 11 sixteenths ounces. Now, here's a fellow that seems to have quite a bit of pull in our congregation. Three temple presidents, past, future, present, and a young future hopeful who bids all of us and you farewell from Art Ball's farm. <laughs>